Welcome back to the channel, and how can I say this? It has been a busy week. A lot has happened recently. I want to catch you up on everything, go through your comments, and I thought, why not just put it all in one video? And I'd like to start with kind of a correction. It looks like the roadside assistance thing is only taking place in the Europe side. The UK got the English email that I shared in a short saying roadside assistance was done for, and then I've also seen a Dutch version of the same email, but US roadside assistance is probably still active at this point, but it could be gone anytime, so something to consider for the future. Next up, Bloomberg released an article identifying Fisker financial woes. It was behind a paywall, and that article was the framework for my Fisker Financials Explained video. You can check that out in the description. Fisker added six new dealerships, which really sounds like exciting news and anything good now is good to hear. But in my opinion, it is not something to be taken as Fisker's success. They are moving to a dealership model, but it's primarily because they don't have a choice. They don't have enough money to pay staff and they've already outsourced everything else. This is the only way to continue to sell Fisker Oceans. On the other side of things, Monday they remotely shut down a technician tab and access. He's my counterpart in Utah. He got let go in the middle of updating a customer's car, causing the Fisker to brick. Instead of letting him get it done, they said we're sending another tech. Yikes. And from the rumor mill, also from the same source, based on my knowledge, they are releasing 2.1, 2.2 in May, and this will help a lot of bugs that 2.0 created. Also possible for one pedal driving. I'll believe that when I see it. Let me know your thoughts down below. Somebody released instructions on performing a factory reset, but it bricked their car so that's on patreon if you want to look at that and i'll tell you exactly what i told the people on patreon do not attempt this i haven't attempted it and i won't i got my first sponsorship this week i had no intention of taking a sponsorship but i think you guys remember this short i think it's about time we go from this to this and I guess that short, even screen recorded and cropped even further from my short, is good enough for an advertisement for Liner X. Brian was nice enough to send me a screenshot of it, which is the only evidence I have that it's running, which I promptly sent to Liner X. I told them that they didn't have my permission to use my video as an ad, and they said they were sorry and they would like permission. They also said that if I ordered floor mats, they'd be happy to refund my money. I thought, sure. $160 reimbursement for theft is perfectly fine with me. So that was fun. I'd also like to go into some of the details of the Fisker meetup. If you guys want to watch the video of my travel to and from North Carolina for that meetup, feel free to check it out. The biggest thing I learned on that trip is that you cannot trust the navigation and the fact that Fisker does not identify what company the charger that it is directing you to owns the hardware can cause a ton of problems. I had my issues with EV Connect, which I've never used because there's none near me. And the fact that once you say go on your destination, you can no longer identify which chargers it has selected is just absolutely horrible. In fact, in the video I took for this example, it told me to go to a charger that has been completely abandoned since 2022. A note on the sport, there was a sport trim in North Carolina other than my own, which was cool. I got to sit in a Big Sur Blue Ocean One. That was awesome. As well as drive it, and the driver was kind enough to let me stomp it a couple times in hyper mode, which never gets old. He also said he's had an almost error-free experience in his Ocean and I believe him because the drive we took was error-free. I learned a lot about the process of starting the vehicle that can have an effect on each drive. An owner with experience in program let me know to unlock the car, open the door, close the door, buckle your seatbelt, and then press the brake to turn it on. This makes sure the seat sensor is engaged, the car knows you're in and buckled, and the door is closed so the vehicle is ready to drive, which means all the modules will respond as ready to drive. The Ocean answers the question, what happens when a cacophony of inexperience and lack of testing collide? The modules in the Fisker Ocean don't get along with each other. The communication is poor. It's like if your buddy worked at a mechanic shop. He had a problem with the customer's vehicle. He went to the owner, but the owner wasn't there. He went to the front desk and they were able to tell him where the owner was, what the customer's email was. So then he can send an email copying both the owner and the current customer. So immediately after a problem is discovered, not only does the customer have a direct line of communication with the boss, but also Your the order? technician working on his vehicle. If this was the ocean, it's the same scenario, but no front desk. So you get wrong part, boss not home. Wrong part, boss not home, and eventually a crash. Or you're just driving down the road and it says, wrong part, boss not home. 
And there was one more piece of news that kind of affects everyone, no matter who you are, that I didn't cover yet. And that's the supercharger team. And to talk about this, I want to start with this article right here. Tesla owes its supercharging success to this woman. I respect Elon Musk's goal and vision as far as a lot of his companies and the things he's doing, but this kind of stuff doesn't fly under Elon Musk. If he's not taking credit for what's happening, that's not happening anymore. And we can speculate all day about what Tesla is going to do next or what they didn't do before they fired the supercharger team. But what we do know is consumer confidence is over for this company. The superchargers were being exponentially expanded. The entire country was going to have access Access to charging. Every car from every manufacturer was on board to making these superchargers accessible. And then Elon fires the whole team. And there's more than the fact that Elon has, let's just call it a complex. During the earnings call, Elon said that we should consider Tesla to be an AI and robotics company. This was an obvious dig at the automotive side of Tesla. Daniel Ho is out. That's the new product guy. There goes your $25,000 consumer-friendly vehicle, as well as Rohan Patel, the policy and business development guy. This Reuters article says, quote, My guess is that now the industry has adopted the NACS standard, he views supercharging less as a strategic moat and more as a cost center. End quote which was from an analyst. The Tesla supercharger network could have significant value if Musk wanted to sell it, analysts said. Rival U.S. charging networks have struggled with reliability problems and do not have the scale or prime locations Tesla has locked in. And finally, Musk could take a Silicon Valley entrepreneur's view that charging is a legacy business that could be streamlined or even divested. But if that supercharger network isn't top priority for Tesla, it's no longer holding up to its mission statement. Accelerate the world's transition to society sustainable energy. If you literally cancel the expansion of the access to the sustainable energy, you have not only defied your customers, but your investors and your mission at the same time. And now's a great time to ask you to subscribe because I own a Tesla Model Y and there may be some action there in the very near future. And of course, we need to talk about the arbitration. We had an owner who basically went for arbitration from minute one and was able to successfully get it with his Fisker Ocean 1. Now remember, he had an early delivery Ocean 1, the software wasn't delivered, Many, many other factors contributed to this specific owner getting a buyback. What does this mean? At this point, not much. Fisker Ocean owner-wise, he's an outlier, and he still doesn't have his money. So when he gets his check, I'll update you. Fisker isn't paying their leases, and they're deactivating technicians. So I couldn't fathom a buyback would be at the top of the priority list, especially if it was legally ordered. But enough news. On to your comments. The Magna Earnings Call says no more production for the ocean. This is correct. Here's your evidence. An update on our current status for the Fisker Ocean Program. Production of the vehicle is currently idled. Our current outlook issued today assumes no further production. How is Fisker signing six additional dealers if they're just the note holder's salesperson? This one kind of answers itself. You ran into a buddy of yours that owes you $500, and it just so happens that he's standing beside his car. He just went into Walmart and bought $500 worth of soda, and he's holding the receipt. In this scenario, you are the note holder, Fisker is the buddy you just ran into, the soda is the ocean inventory, and the receipt is the agreement in the notes. Thanks for your comment. While it may seem predatory, it should be noted that lending money to Fisker was a very high-risk investment. Companies have a duty to their shareholders to protect their investments. They structure the deal so that Fisker would get its money and they would be protected should Fisker default. Many startups take these terms because they feel they can find alternative financing to get out of this situation at a later time. When they don't do it quick enough, the debt's burden sinks the company. Unfortunately, Fisker's mismanagement was so vast that the debt issues didn't really come into play. Fisker was not a business from the start. That business model had way too many holes. The first warning to investors should have been using the SPAC process. I have no notes. But basically, we see you have a technical team of people who are financial professionals. You are here to discredit Fisker. I pity you. Great feedback. No team of professionals. Just me, a couple cameras, a microphone, and a computer. But thanks for your comment. I used to work for a firm that made these types of investments. The target would be distressed companies that should already restructure, but with management teams that are able to get away with betting what's left of the company on a long shot to keep their positions. For the note holders, they just made an investment where the base case is company bankruptcy, and they get 
get a healthy return, but if it all works out, they make a VC type return. It's a win-win for them. It shouldn't have been allowed, but is the result of bad governance. Once again, no notes. How many miles and how many hours on the North Carolina trip? And what was the charging cost? The trip down took 11 and a half hours and three of that was charging. Thanks to my uncertainty on the trip down. The cost for the first leg was just $16.04. I started at 100% and two of my charges were free. We arrived with 40%. The return trip on Electrify America and other networks was $62.13 and we arrived at home with 10%. We stayed in a hotel in Withville, Virginia on the way home, but the drive home was much shorter, only 10 hours. 425 miles was the one-way distance. Great questions. Another fun fact about the North Carolina trip and a testament to the ocean's comfort level, Connie's never really fallen asleep on a road trip until we took the long one in the ocean, of which she slept for almost two hours through West Virginia on our way home. So testaments to the ocean there. That's all for now. I got a pretty exciting video coming tomorrow if you're watching this today when I released it. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss that. I'd also just like to thank all my patrons and YouTube members who get early access to videos. And there's also some great Fisker manuals. Your support allows me to continue to focus on what I need to focus on for you and not try to run after the algorithm. There's some really cool stuff coming as rewards for being a patron and a YouTube member. I wanted to set something like that up very, very quickly since you guys started joining. And I have done that before the end of May, there will be a bonus. You'll get access to something early and a free gift for you. So thank you all for signing up. I sincerely appreciate that. Subscribe for more and we'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.